come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Happens every Saturday night right here on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Podcast Addict, and more. If you found us on one of those fine repositories of internet radio, you should give us a like or subscribe or give us a review. We love that kind of stuff. Yeah, fire away. Yeah. (laughs) With your reviews and whatnot. Uh, So what we do here is uh, every week we watch a movie that's chosen round robin by one of the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. You confused me. I was like, wait, wait, are we talking, are we talking to Holly? Are you going to me? Okay. And uh, I was ready, damn it. Well, so, the, so what we're going to do, in case this is your first rodeo, we're going to talk about the movie for a little bit, and then uh, we're going to do some mail. And mail. we hope that you will write in to us on uh, Facebook. Please. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, by email Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show and then after that we're going to go around the table and give reviews of the movie so stick with us all the way through tonight's movie was chosen by Holly me Holly what did we watch tonight tonight we watched Dead Alive or for you New Zealanders we watched Brain Dead I hope there's New Zealanders watching. yeah I hope so <laughs> the Kiwis the Kiwis I think it might be known as Brain Dead everywhere outside of the United yeah. States yeah there was um there was another film called Dead Alive. Uh, Brain Dead. Uh, yeah, Bill, sorry, Bill sorry. Pullman in it, I think. Sorry, there was another film called oh. Brain Dead um, being made around the same time, and so they changed it to um, to Dead Alive, and then they said it just needed to be Dead Alive in the U.S. Everywhere else, it could be Brain Dead. Isn't there also like a Japanese like? Video game martial arts movie called Dead Alive, though. Dead yes. or Alive? Is it Dead yeah. or Alive? Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, it's still close. Close yeah. enough. Yep. I think there's a, there's also a like a mini series called Dead Alive. There's there's a lot of close. Well, the two names. very. Yeah, it's dead. It's alive. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it pops yeah. up. <laughs> Titles or things every now and again. So, did we hit what year this came at us from? Uh, New Zealand ninety three, and then the U S ninety or New Zealand ninety two, and then U S ninety three. And it's directed by Peter Jackson. Who's he? Um, well, <laughs> you might know him from a little movie called Frighteners. Yep. Meet mm-hmm. the Feebles. Meet the Feebles. <laughs> Bad taste. Bad taste. Bad taste. Um, some of you, a select few, might know him the from The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay, The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> or The Lovely Bones. Or, or The Lovely Bones. Yes. What a King Kong movie. Kong. King Kong. Yeah. King Kong. Also a shit movie. Yeah. yeah. And a very few of you from a movie called Heavenly Creatures. Yeah, yeah. Creatures. that's right. I've not seen Heavenly Creatures. I, actually, I dig it. You know, it's got its problems, but I dig it. Well, there's an evolution to Peter Jackson that I guess maybe we should talk about here. I mean, out really bad. Have we done Peter Jackson movies before? We did the Frighteners. We did the Frighteners, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which came after this. But I mean, like, there's a time like uh, his first three movies, at least that I know of, unless he did something before Bad Taste. Right? Mm. No, I think I think he might have done work on a show, but no, Bad Taste was his first film. And Bad Taste is like a comedy UFO splatter movie. It's very weird. Mm -hmm. Like said a bunch of words that I like. You might (laughs) like Bad Taste. Mm -hmm. Like just look at the cover of Bad Taste, you'll get a good sense for the weirdness. But again, I saw the cover and I was like, yeah. I think I saw That's, it a very long time ago because mm-hmm. I mean I'd seen Dead Alive and then had to see the other stuff that he'd made mm-hmm. prior to that. Uh, Meet the Feebles is interesting, to say the least. Yeah, oh, it's, it's an odd. Right, right, right. Yeah, okay, I take that back. I don't want to see bad taste. Meet the Feebles. <laughs> Meet the Feebles looks... is often described as the Muppets on acid. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a, there's a lot of puppets. He liked yeah. a, he, yeah. he, he liked did. his puppets. He did, didn't he? he? Did. He's very uh, puppetry. Yeah. Yeah, puppetry. Yeah, it treated them like they were real people behind scenes of something like the Muppet Show and like all the infighting and affairs and all that where they were going on with uh, these Muppet characters, which was just perverse because they were Muppets. Right. They made a show like that on Fox, kind of like years ago. Had Sarah Silverman in it. I think Seth Green voiced a bunny. Oh yeah, weird. yeah. What the fuck, are you talking? About? Oh, this, this yeah. existed. I this swear is to God, this is something only you remember, it like, Sean. It was like they did a TV show. Did you work for Fox at this time, Sean? Mm-hmm. No, no. <laughs> they did a TV show. He's still pushing that old right. content. Right. He's like, come on, you can find it online at fox.com. <laughs> But the whole thing was like the the puppets did their own TV show and this was the behind the scenes of that and they were just like, you know, 
hand up the ass puppets. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you're minding this right now. Yeah, right. This is, this, just this in case we guys. don't know. This is yeah. why this yeah. needs but, to be a know, TV show, yeah. right? But it was like they were real, like they were employed on a show. Sean's where they waving his hand out. around. Yeah. I gesticulate well, when I talk. Staring you at me will like I should never know. know. What he's talking about everyone. <laughs> Greg, Greg the bunny. Is that, oh, Greg that sounds bunny. familiar. Yeah, okay, okay. Greg the yeah, bunny yeah, yeah. was the show. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sarah Silverman was in it. I think Breck and Meyer was in it as well. Fucking re- any- ripped off Meet the Feet. I guess so. Let us know yeah. if there's any Greg the Bunny fans. Yeah. Yeah. Let, yeah. Have you seen Greg the Bunny? Sean Do you remember this show? Feel so alone. I don't want to feel No, I just don't want to feel like I'm imagining this in my head. Yeah, no, I remember like something called Greg the Bunny. Yeah, I think with it was Seth Greg the Bunny. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, I mean, okay. So, is there a distinct, I mean, maybe this is what I'm getting at. There's a distinct uh, difference between the. I would say the the frighteners is the dividing line dividing line between current era Peter Jackson yeah. and pre era mm-hmm. Peter Jackson. I mean, do you I mean see, to the fact yeah. that I, I can't think it remember starts Heavenly with Heavenly Creatures, creatures and long. like really, but really, yeah, full force at frighteners. Mm-hmm. Heavenly Creatures is definitely a departure from these three those yeah. three mo- movies we right. just yeah. mentioned. Is, is, is yeah. Heavenly Creatures the step over towards drama, Heavenly yeah, creatures drama is when and. Is- Fantasy wanted, and all that. When he wanted to be taken more serious and break right. into the mainstream, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, there's, well, because yeah. if they had seen Meet the Feebles and uh, or a bad Dead taste, Alive, they would have been like, no, this guy is not going anywhere near Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. I mean, not gonna. Yeah, happen. that's, that's what I said like. When we watch Frighteners. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. like who wanted this guy to do the Lord of the Rings yeah. movies? I know it was like a passion project of his. Yeah, yeah, it was. And this was all basically like all these films were, I suppose, in some way, like him trying to create some type of demo reel so he could convince somebody to let him do Lord of the Rings. And that's, later on, King Kong, because well, this that's movie starts of, out on Skull Island. That's kind of the thing about Peter Jackson, is all of his projects kind of seem like passion projects mm-hmm. in some form. Mm-hmm. Like this, he really got out that need for gore and puppetry and, and meet the feebles. And then... Um, he always, like you said, he always wanted to do King Kong. He was a huge King Kong fan, and we see um, nods to that in this. There's actually a guy in this movie, I don't remember who it is. He was in the 1976, six, eight, whatever. Six, 76. 76 version of King Kong. Like, mm. he, he has several nods to King Kong in this. Um, so, yeah, and then Lord of the Rings as well. I think there's a lot of um, lead up to passion projects in all of his work. That's pretty awesome, though. Like, could you imagine, like, not only do you direct movies, but almost every movie you make is something you've always wanted to make? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. who else gets to do that? Yeah, you know, that's looking, pretty awesome. Looking at his filmography, and I was thinking, I was like, man, this guy, he just does what he wants. Yeah, right. like, that's, that's awesome. Kind of awesome. That may not end up great, but he does what he wants. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, props for that, man. That's kind of that's kind of cool. Yeah, I think the closest he came to, like, a studio film was probably The Frighteners, right? Because that started... Yeah. Maybe Lovely Bones. Well, I mean, that was later. Yeah. On. yeah. But Early even, on, but then even then, that was yeah, something I that he wanted to do, if I'm correct. The Frighteners started off as a Tales from the, the like it was going to be the third Tales from the Crypt movie. Right. Yeah, it was going to be directed by Robert Zemeckis from what I remember. And then they handed it off to Peter Jackson because of, you know, the stuff that he'd done. Yeah. It's like, okay, you've proved that you can do, you know, you have a sensibility for gory comedy mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. horror, and then you've also got, you know, the dramatic stakes of, you know, the the Heavenly Creatures filmmaker. Right. We want to see none of that come through in this movie called The Frighteners. <laughs> so where did Peter Jackson, like, uh, develop his... Well, I guess it's because maybe what you're saying, that he is able to do anything that he wants and built this cachet over time that, like, nobody tells him no. Essentially. Yeah, we we, uh, we were talking off mic that... Um, he doesn't embrace the editing process ever. Yeah. No. And that is evident by the fact that there are three Hobbit films made out of a 300 page book. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> I think when we watch the Frank Nassau, it's like editors are not his friend. No. He, all. he doesn't know what that is. Way too long. And mm-hmm. I'm surprised. I mean, we, like you said, there's apparently longer cuts of this movie available out there or hard to find, yeah, but they exist. They're not, they're not much shorter. Mm-hmm. It, it was only shut. It was only shorter for radio, for um like, um, yeah, the, yeah, the content. Radio. Content, yeah. thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, but his nothing was cut from his version. Like mm-hmm. ev- like he everything that he put down on paper was in this film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then somewhere along the line, it's like I, I mean, the downside to his, you know, to the the lack of appreciating his editor is that we have these movies that just kind of run on and on and on yeah. and on. Yeah. As seen by everything I think frighteners forward, although personally I don't mind the Lord of the Rings even in their extended cuts, but like, you know, King Kong goes on forever. Yeah, the Hobbit goes on mm-hmm. forever. Oh. Frighteners goes on forever. Mm-hmm. 
but this, the flip side of that, like if we try to see the good end of this is like, well, here's a guy who creates like these worlds completely and is able to like do every, like if you are a fan of the Hobbit, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I assume that, you know, and you want to be in all this fantasy stuff that this is like, you just get, you know, it's like a mini series basically mm-hmm. where you get to live in middle earth and you're like, yeah. just give me more, yeah. give me more. You're channeling Tom right now. Yeah, was that a pretty good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it, it, like, it felt like through. Tom. It came through. <laughs> I got it. It's like, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, OG Tom from OG the Tom. early days of the Saturday Night Freak Show. I know he was one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> Rain of Fire scale. He was one of those people who loved the, the, the fantasy of the Lord of the Rings movie so much that, like, you could not give him enough Hobbit. No, just let him just... Swimming it. See, I went into it feeling that way until I actually saw the Hobbit movies, and then the, they were not even they were unrecognizable compared to the Lord of the Rings movies. So mm-hmm. they're just that such is a true. I mean, I, I different... do enjoy the Hobbit just for that reason. Like I've always loved the Hobbit, mm-hmm. um, but I, I can appreciate that they are too long. There's too much content. It could have been one movie. Yeah, easily. there's like, no I'm reason for it to be that. three movies. I never, uh, yeah. I never bothered. I like the Lord of the Rings movies. You never mm-hmm. watched the Hobbit? I never just, watched just the Hobbit. Just to see it? Nope. Wow. Nope. You got the Rankin Bass cartoon does in like an hour and 15 minutes sure. or something like that. Yeah, I don't go back and revisit that because fantasy is not but specifically my thing. I'm like, well, yeah, sure. But smug. Well, how long are those movies? Oh. On, they're three hours they? each. Yeah. I mean, right? They're, yeah, they're over there's... two hours. I mean, I'm at like, least. I like Martin Freeman. and Yes, I love Martin Freeman. But it's not, I just, no. Mm-hmm. Especially based on what everybody else is saying about it, like... Well, is, we knew it, it was going to be too long. He made yeah. it three movies, and then even I know I'm just like, that's too long, dude. It is not recognizable as the same universe. It really nah. isn't. Because, you know, there's no practical effects. It's all green screen and CGI. It is true. I've seen yeah. a few it, things. It, I'm just like, it looks Ugh. like a bad video game. Feel it. The whole movie really looks do. like a bad yeah, video game. Yeah. People, that's all I heard. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, I don't want to go into that. That's mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. Like what can happen within like a ten year span? Right. I mean, like you know, where you would have best picture guys winners here and director yeah. winners. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he is the best for Return of the King, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. for Return best of the King, picture. best picture that best won eleven, 11 Oscars. 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 Yeah, the movie won awesome. eleven Oscars. Yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah. And it's, have you guys ever seen that side by side of like Ian McKellen um, as Gandalf in one of I think it's in Return of the King, but I'm not entirely sure. And then a side by side of him in The Hobbit. It's no. both inside Bilbo's house. And the first image from, uh, it might have been The Fellowship, actually. Um, it's all complete practical set, and they're doing the forced perspective with mm-hmm. him. And then in The Hobbit, it's literally just Ian McKellen sitting at a green table and a green chair in a green mm-hmm. room. And that's yeah, the really. difference that happened that's, between those two franchises. That's the, that's the one that I believe it's, he's quoted saying, I didn't... He started crying. He started crying. He's like, this is not what I wanted to do movies for. Yeah, he said, I didn't he get into really acting upset. to do this. Yeah. yeah. Damn. He said, I, "Like they literally have him looking at like a tennis ball on a stick too in that yeah. scene." And Which he's nowadays just, is pretty common. I know they do that with sure, all the Avenger but movies, that's, but like, but that, look, but look where yeah, he came from. Do that from. to Surrey and McKellen, damn it. Yeah, look where he came from. With I mean, yeah. look at the practicals and yeah. this and everything. And yeah, even I know. What he did like he, I'm it's, sure he so was like upset through, at having to do amazing. that through yeah. Peter Jackson's career. You can like chart the yeah. you know I mean just with this one guy. I mean yeah. you can do it with other guys too, but like. The evolution of visual effects, or, yeah. you know, at least from where we were in the 19, late 1980s and doing stuff with practical effects where you had to use uh, this is, I think, like what, you know, and maybe this will be like the ode to practical effects episode. But the, uh, <laughs> it might be. The, <laughs> The idea that, you know, like if you had a uh, uh, a concept in your head that you're like, I want to try and pull this off and you did, you couldn't rely on the computer, you mm-hmm. know, like green screen composites and all this stuff. You had to actually figure out, like, how can I get this through the camera, mm-hmm. you know, like through what method? And so you end up watching, I think, what's the equivalent of like a magic show. Yeah. You know, especially in this, it's like you're just watching like illusion after illusion after illusion, you know, happening right in front of your uh, in front of your face. Yeah. Which is impressive, Mm -hmm. which now it's like, I mean, I suppose you're still watching illusions, but it doesn't have the same, at least to me. I mean, all you guys are nodding kind of in agreement. Yeah, for sure. There's some there's a sense of like we're kind of like movie romantics. We, We need that that practical that tangible yeah. effect because like you said if, it is real in one sense or the other mm-hmm. yeah, very much touch that like if you if, back to lord of the rings if you look at like the main orc or orakai whichever it was mm-hmm. I remember, in uh, lord of the rings as opposed to the hobbit 
it's 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 heartbreaking, right? It, like you said, it looks like a video game. Mm-hmm. Well, and just then, just the standard makeup, like that much, can ruin an entire movie if it's did, not done right. Now he did jump into this late, didn't he? It wasn't uh, Guillermo Gil- Guillermo del Toro? Del yes. Toro yeah. yeah, nobody can say does that. Does his does no. his classic thing of getting attached to a movie and then running away from it? You mean yeah. like he's you know like he does with you know how many times he guys oh, no. guys take a <laughs> shot for every time you hear Del Toro's attached to a movie oh, project? Yeah. Mm. It never it's never going to come through. Don't get your hopes up. Yeah. You know? Kind of just like, well, Peter Jackson will come do it. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, sh- I guess, I mean, maybe part of the problem was that he didn't have like the he pre-production didn't, he didn't time the, to get into that. He didn't have the that. prep time. That's yeah. it. Yeah. He didn't have the prep time. Well, and he didn't want to do it either. No, he, he oh, There's publicly that. said he didn't want to do it. But yeah. and with and with the orcs too, and like the in in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy, Peter Jackson had every single orc in that movie had a backstory and yep. had armor built specifically to their backstory. Yeah, it was that is not carried over in Hobbit at all. Yeah, it was actually like it's the Citizen Kane of fantasy movies. That's when you come to whether it's a movie or a film, like the the artistic sense. There's no artistic sense. I mean, not none. I mean, I couldn't do I couldn't do the Hobbit. It's, yeah, you know, because but, it's the same. It's Weta and Richard. Uh, oh God, what's his name? The guy who did the makeup effects, even for this, and Taylor, Richard, Richard Taylor, Taylor. Yeah. yeah, still doing the sa- the effects for Lord of the Rings. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, he has but, he had his A team for all of his movies. I remember like Peter Jackson's like going into Lord of the Rings was like we're gonna take our cameras back in time to Middle Earth and actually like we're gonna film it like it's a real thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that all is it gone shows. by the time you get to you know twenty eleven, mm-hmm. whenever the hell the mm-hmm. Hobbit movies come around Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. all right so maybe we should talk a little bit about this film i mean it's gonna it's gonna overlap (laughs) Mm -hmm. we'll come back to it it's peter jackson it's what you do so in 1992 peter jackson made this movie called dead alive which is kind of i mean it's something also and this is another thing i think that's missing from movies now is the 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 absolute the splatter movie yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right where he said i mean this is in the years of you know these practical effects splatter movies like you know and for some reason i'm saying the blob first but you know uh evil dead right specifically Mm -hmm. evil dead 2 Mm -hmm. and you know these nightmare on elm street movies that would do you know these imaginative gigantic puppeteered Mm -hmm. animatronic you know uh creature things and he said I want to make the goriest movie of all time <laughs> yeah. and plant a flag, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is just going to be the most gory thing that you've ever seen in your life. Ugh. I mean, just to have that as like your ambition. Yeah. Right. <laughs> just be like, this is, yeah. Especially so <laughs> early on in your career, yeah. you know, to like, damn dude. But that's I cool. Just, I, want, yeah. cool. I just want this cool. movie to drip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We want it to ooze. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. God. Just alone. Yeah. Just the, like, whatever sound effects they were using. Yeah. Fully like, artist. Even, I'm not Come even on, man. about, like, scenes where they're, like, ripping zombies apart. No, like, when he's a cleaning dude his... dude eating pudding. Yeah. It's disgusting. disgusting. When he's cleaning his <laughs> mom's... He's trying to clean his mom's arm, ah! and he's, like, touching it. No. Oh, the, 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 sound. the sound is what gets sound. me. <laughs> they, that come out with the visuals were just like... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the wet mouth noises yeah. in this movie oh, were. Nope. Yeah. Well, the no, the way that guy ate pudding was disgusting. Yeah. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's just, uh, uh, I couldn't uh, look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And he, did that, he did that thing too where he hit the spoon on his teeth. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. just like <laughs> makes me cringe. Rub, when it rubs past his lip. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> no. This is all great stuff. It is. Yeah, right? yeah. Saying, like, it, it, no, it's great. It made us all have a visceral experience, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he can pull that off with the dude eating pudding. Yeah. Like, how, I don't know how long I've been watching movies with Sean, but I think this is the first time I heard him go, ugh. Uh, <laughs> I can take most anything. It's, it's just, uh. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ironically, it's not the stuff like you were saying of people being ripped apart. Nah, it's the pudding. Exactly. Like, you know, that's fine. That's why I, you know, I was thinking like there's a, a character that is later has a zombie. People bother me, not zombies. Yes. He, yeah, but the 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 character, the uncle, less uh-huh. he captures a zombie at one point, and instead of you know killing the thing, uh-huh. he gets a pair of pliers and starts pulling the individual teeth out of yeah. its yeah. mouth, yeah. and I'm like. This is just part of Peter Jackson's imagination. Yes. Where, like he has to fit these, you know, like the uh, eating the pudding, mm-hmm. you know, poking the the boil on the yes. arm of the pustule, yeah. you know, and having it burst, you know, pulling teeth out, yeah. like all these you know, little things yes. that are like yeah. exactly. That's <laughs> it's, it's what he wants you to feel. Yeah. He knows yeah. what he's doing in that regard. Yeah, it's like Jim Carrey pushing on his crawl. eyeball. Oh, <laughs> <stop>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he knows those little things that just get to you. He's like, he's going to give you the splatter of zombies, but just actual things are just like, (laughs) yeah. 
<laughs> but it's a, uh, it's, I mean, uh, the, I guess it's, you know, it's coming back to the like imagination that you have to have, you know, in how a, to pull this stuff off yeah. is one thing, mm-hmm. but to come up with the amount of, of scenes and little individual pit, bits of business mm-hmm. that all involve, you know, bodily dismemberment and fluids flying yeah. all over the place yeah. and people coming apart or being taken apart. Things are squirting. Now, okay, so, but if you, <laughs> That's an if understatement. You, if you were to do, okay, so you want to be the goriest movie of all time, mm-hmm. right? And you want to do a horror film. So if you make something that's really dark and scary, right, you would end mm-hmm. up Maybe somewhere uh, in the area of like the modern, re- the Evil Dead remake. Evil Dead, re- yeah, okay, yeah, 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 pretty much. That's what I was thinking when we were watching. I was kind of comparing it to that because, like, that's the most recent thing I've seen that's like on par with right. goriness to this movie. Everything's spraying at you. Like, yeah, yeah that movie, blood it liter- yeah. literally yeah. rains <laughs> blood. Like yeah, just blood but even everywhere. still, like the littlest cut in that movie is like gallons yeah. of blood. Just yeah, that. yeah. Just, but mm-hmm. I mean, we don't get you don't get theater experiences like that right. ever right. anymore. Right. So like, you got to take them where you can get them. But you also find yourself like this is where it comes down on like you're on one side of this uh, the the gore explosion or the other. There are people who cannot take this kind of stuff. Yeah, and you find. Find out it's fun quick. to be in the theater with yeah. those people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you find out pretty quick, like which you know who among you is not uh, not like you, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> because you I, are different. I remember <laughs> watching Dead Alive at be a uh, video store. Like this is back when you know in cool video stores. I was so you can actually watch this, watch this in the, this in the vi- Oh yeah, yeah. We did all sorts of crazy well, things. Okay, but uh, there was this woman who worked at the store next door. It was like a fabric store. She came over and be like, she what came the fuck over are you and watching? was like, m- just offended <laughs> watching this. But this, I guess, brings me to my point. It's like you can do gore in one way where, you know, it's uh, supposed to be scary. Although even the Evil Dead move remake is ridiculous. Yes. Where we sit there going like, that's fucking awesome. This is cool. And you throw up the metal horns, you know. Throw up the horns. Uh, but if you temper it with humor. Mm-hmm. Right? Exactly. It's, it's like more digestible. Goofy, goofy yeah. humor. If it's ridiculous, if it's... It's outrageous if and it makes you laugh. Running on it blood makes it okay. for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tempers it a no, little if, bit. Yes. If this movie had a serious tone, I don't think I'd handle it. No, so, no. You get away with a lot yeah. more if you're just like, it's funny. Yeah, yeah, it's outrageous. But this is, it doesn't even have just a little sense of humor. I mean, I would almost say that this is a flat out comedy. It this is, is yeah, not, yeah, a, not sure. a horror movie. No, yeah. you see the way they were looking at each other when she's like, like, you want to go to the zoo? He's like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. The, the side eye. Yeah, that's yeah. great. <laughs> so everything's kind of played up almost like, I mean, I, I'm saying like a Looney Tunes cartoon, but maybe that's not entirely No, that fair. is accurate. The it's, sound about the scene is where he's running on blood, that. that's like yeah. straight yeah. up yeah. The Wiley, Wiley Coyote. Coyote. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, even the way he shoots earlier scenes where there's not like, like I said, where it is just two people interacting, but he shoot the the close ups he shoots in, and um, like the quick movements up to mm-hmm. faces and everything. It's it's very cartoonish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I think I saw someone online said it was splat stick humor. Splat stick. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Bravo, yeah. bravo to you, sir. <laughs> yeah. You are the one who have coined that phrase. <laughs> oh, they bravo. were using that way. Yeah, well, <laughs> splat. But we just haven't you know done anything like this, right? Anymore, yeah. right? yeah, where we're gonna slither maybe. You know, I mean, maybe. Sh- I mean, Shaun of the Dead's not nearly as gory, but it's it's got a similar yeah, type of true. humor right it's got yeah it's in there which, yeah. which is actually how i learned about this movie because i'm a huge fan of Shaun of the dead and this was the biggest influence on that movie was mm-hmm. dead alive i can see that yeah mm-hmm. yeah they're within that area mm-hmm. did you hear or have you seen a movie recently called the scout's guide to the zombie apocalypse yeah did you see it I've heard of it. I haven't. No, seen it. Yeah, no, I didn't see it, but I've heard of it, and I saw nope. the trailer. It looked pretty funny. I think it's you know kind of in this in the, in the similar vein, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But nobody saw it. It just got buried, and I mean, it's not as good as sure. you know this movie, obviously. But it was kind of I think trying to do that the gross out comedy mm-hmm. splatter splat stick movie. Mm-hmm. How was I don't remember it too much as far as splatter wise. Zombie Land was that splattery? Not yeah. it had a really lot, it over like, the top cold open. Remember yeah, that like remember title sequence was like that, that felt very yeah. splattery and kind yeah. of of that where it's just like yeah. let's yeah. get it all out there and just yeah. <laughs> yeah Zombie Land. I don't know if it carried that thread as... throughout the movie, but uh, that, not really. That beginning yeah. always like that. Be- if nothing else, that title sequence feels yeah. a part of that. Mm-hmm. It, just out there and ridiculous and just grossness everywhere. Yeah, it's kind of along the same line, but it. 
no. it had a slightly different feel to well, it. Well, there's like there's the horror comedy where it's like like I'd say like Night of the Creeps, right? right. Which we mm-hmm. watched on this show. That's like it's a horror movie, but it has like this sense of humor about everything it does, so you can't really take it seriously, and that mm-hmm. makes it fun to watch it. Whereas Dead Alive's tone is comedy. Oh yeah, with the imagery of like horror, right? Mm-hmm. Or the situations mm-hmm. of yeah. horror. Yeah. But without, I mean, it's obviously not trying to be scary. But that's why I'm like, no, there's a can... giant tit monster at the end of this movie. Yeah, I don't think right. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I just, I don't under, I maybe this is me. I mean, like, you know, you try to put yourself in other people's shoes, but I don't understand how you can take this seriously and be offended at the gore in this movie because it is literally. I mean, you know. People get upset by violence if, mm-hmm. uh, you know, somehow, you know, some kid's going to see this and go try to duplicate it. Or it's, you know, you're seeing people get hurt, mm-hmm. you know, and then you're living uh, vicariously a watching people get hurt. attacked his fellow students with a lawnmower this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Well, I think... Well, I, go ahead. I was going to say, I mean, it depends on what you're... Lo- are you looking at it as people who... Oh, are okay with gore in general get offended by it or people who just don't like gore at all because I can understand if people just don't want to see anything gory. I, I mean, it's just my, the, my parents, the for example, violence they realm. Yeah, well, and you got to remember too, it's a uh, like, it's largely a generational thing. Exactly. Um, yeah. you know, people that grew up, you know, in the fifties and sixties were not exposed to anything like this. Yeah. They had a very, you know, my narrow, parents, narrow entertainment window. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. No, I've told this story to you guys a million times, but like, my mom did tried to like bond with me over watching No Country for Old Men, and as soon as, <laughs> the, as soon as he strangles the guy with the handcuffs, she, so two seconds into the movie, she was like, I can't watch this. Like, she could not handle that. Like. I had so, the exact same experience. Yeah. I was like, oh, my parents will like this movie. Yeah. No, they did not. Yeah. Mm. Like, they so not. they're just not used to seeing things like that. So to see something so over the top seems like pornographic oh, to my them. Parents, you know? I think my that's... parents are different then because they. They are. You're, <laughs> yeah, I've they, met your parents. My, my they parents are different. Are different. <laughs> they like this stuff. My dad, especially. Oh. <laughs> my dad is like, is proto me. So he likes all this stuff and then he <laughs> passed it on to me. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> so I never had that experience. Yeah. My yeah. parents are pretty down. Yeah. yeah, my parents would be horrified that I like this movie. <laughs> yeah, same oh, here. Like, same here. They'd be like, "Oh, like oh Michaela, oh, there yeah. she goes." Yeah. Yeah. My dad'd be like, "That's yeah. wild." <laughs> my mom would be like, "Ugh, really? What yeah. is this?" Yeah. But she would like laugh at it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. She oh, would, yeah. So she would at least still get that right. it's you know not. A serious... No, no. She would be like, "All right, I get the joke, but it's still disgusting. I don't want to watch it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but bring offended. it back. It is. I think it is a generational thing. Yeah, for sure. We have we have access to the internet. We're exposed to horrifying things at the click of a button at this yeah. point, you know. Mm-hmm. So well, and here at the table, we gravitate toward this stuff anyway. Yeah, exactly. Seen, you know, all manner of stuff. So you know, this is you know, and this is one of the things where I you know suppose like you are kind of looking for the uh, the the pinnacle of much like Peter Jackson, right? He's like, if I'm going to go there, there's people, there are, there's a, a following that will follow me up the mountain. Right. <laughs> yep. Right. Yes, yep. we will. The, uh, <laughs> You know, the pinnacle we'll help you of stick that door. flag down yeah. on that mountain, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is it the goriest movie ever made? I think it's so. up there. It's, it's up the there. Gore- it's the hands down the goriest movie I've ever seen. I think e- the Evil Dead remake is pretty close second. It's pretty, it's the most disgusting movie I've ever seen. Yeah, the, it's one? the most gross this, out this one. one. This one is the most disgusting movie. Yeah. Now, when you say that, unpack that, sir. What are we well, talking, beyond talking about? Beyond the pudding and the beyond the pudding, well, I, I think just like I said, it's it's a dr- it's the drippiness of it. It's just like just <laughs> and it gets so creative with it. It like, does. It's, it gets it's so disgusting creative with in it. the way where it's just like not not that I am disgusted. By it, you know what I mean? It's not a negative term when I say disgusting. It's just like it's just it's it's this movie. If I felt like I came out of this movie covered in <laughs> yeah in, yeah. Like, in gross like you stuff, you feel like you need a like, shower. I, yeah, I feel <laughs> disgusting after and I came it out. It is of this. relentless. Like oh, it, yeah. once yeah. it starts, it does not let up. It is just yes. and so like, like we said, last... editing. There's no editing. It yeah. just goes on and on and on and on and on. And we and get then, the last twenty minutes. It's yeah. just like. We're going yeah. to the finish line. Yep. Mm-hmm. Everybody hop on the lawnmower. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Were you surprised on this rewatch? Well, some of you. So, Sean, you hadn't seen the whole I thing. I hadn't seen the whole thing, no. Before tonight. No. Mikhail and Holly and I have seen it before. Were you surprised on the rewatch that it took a while to actually get a head of steam on it? Yeah. Because it seems to me that I remember the rat monkey thing. Rat monkey. was a whole, yeah. Yeah. It's a rat monkey. Uh, it's yeah. A rat, yeah. Yeah, it's a rat, rat monkey. monkey. Yep. All the little Stop rats came and monkey. raped all the monkeys, and we have this like, yeah. rat this monkey. I love the rat, rat monkey rat design. Rat monkey. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, I love the claymation yeah. rat monkey. I want more of it. Oh, that stop motion animation was awesome. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I just remember it like getting going earlier. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think that like the whole like 
uh, I don't even know what to call it. I, can you call it a first act? Because nothing really happens. It moves way too slow. Editing. Mm-hmm. Ha- let it happen there. <laughs> Get us to the action quicker. I suppose we get to a certain point that I wasn't expecting to get to so early on where the zombie stuff starts happening. Mm-hmm. I feel like that happened earlier, but yeah. then it kind of, it's it's slow in that part, and then it kind of ramps up. Mm-hmm. Like, we got to the zombie stuff pretty quick, as far as I was concerned. Like, it felt we got there pretty quick. As in there were zombies, but you didn't yes. have the, okay, but. Only in that there were zombies. Yeah. Not that anything happened with them, really. They right. just existed, yeah. Yes. Because you don't hit that critical mass mode. No. And I guess maybe this is what this movie also shares with uh, films from this era, right? Like Reanimator or, Mm -hmm. you know, something. Or uh, I'm saying Night of the Creeps, but I think they do basically contain everything at the end of Night Mm -hmm. of the Creeps. The idea that by the end of the movie, like things have just gotten completely, Return of the Living Dead, right? Right. Things have gotten so out of hand that we cannot contain it and like, oh shit, this means bad things for the rest (laughs) of the world. Yeah, You know? Mm -hmm. It's like at some point, well, I guess maybe this has a happy ending too, spoiler, but uh, you know, it does kind of escalate and there's this percolation time where it's like, well, Lionel has to deal with, you know, his mother and then there's like several other zombies and they all end up right. in his house, but he's basically their caretaker. In an, in an absurdist way is, yeah. is how we get there because he does take a zombie baby for a walk in the park. That scene was yeah, amazing. Like <laughs> uh, okay. You so, want to talk splat stick? Oh my Slapstick? Yeah. Oh, Slapstick, man. Yeah. He started to punt a baby across a park full of other babies. It. And what, I love, baby. what I love about that is this movie that had a budget of $3 million and they came in $45,000 under budget. Get so out. Peter Jackson took that money. He's like, I've got Bravo. an idea for a park scene. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I love it. And that's where the park scene came from. And it's. I love that scene you so know, much. You know, now that you're saying that, that does seem like the... Okay, so you know, my problem with later day Peter Jackson has always been as I... I've tried to describe it as like he creates these little... Uh, like... Uh, little pockets? Self-contained... Little mini, little mini things? Like, uh, yeah. Self-contained... I was trying to say submersibles, right? Like this is in the words of Mel Brooks. Like a, they have these submersible, non-submersible units and you string them all together and you have a movie. If you can sync them, then, you know, mm-hmm. you cut that scene out. But he comes up with a bunch of these things where they're like just a skit. Yeah. The, the Hobbit yeah. movies are full of skits yeah. all hung together. You can have wow. 16 of them, you can have 8 of them, but none of them actually advance the plot. I think the the baby scene in this is maybe like the only scene that exists apart from the rest of the narrative. It, it felt a yeah. little Monty Python-ish. Yeah. 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 I was expecting that Benny, Benny Hill wacky sex to yeah, kick exactly. in like any minute oh, yeah, on that scene. Needed. Like it could be excised. But, it yeah. but it's but totally it worth it. But yeah. it's worth yeah. it. Because it's, awesome. it, 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 it's gold. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, we got a baby now. Yeah. <laughs> We're calling it a baby, but it's really like a garbage pail kid. Like yeah. that's yeah, what yeah, it, it is. is. Like, And it has that, that little laugh. laugh. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. He takes it to the park. He's trying to learn like how like how do I be I mean it's just like oh, this hilarious. beat in the middle of the movie that I love yeah. that there's it's no just, there's like no hesitation he goes downstairs and he's like well there's a zombie baby now and in uh, next scene he's got a pram and the, right. the like, walk. <laughs> like he is dad now yeah. I think oh, that's it's wonderful to just have that dedication you're just like this is what I gotta do now I have a baby I'm a, I'm mm-hmm. a dad now <laughs> It's how wonderful. did we get that baby, though? I think we skipped over a pretty important detail oh, yeah, of how we ended up with that baby. Sex zombie and, sex. You know, well, that zombie <laughs> sex comes from uh, random uh, Catholic kung fu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We talk about the priest. I kick ours for the Lord. I kick ours for the Lord. <laughs> Why do you have a kung fu movie? Time for mo- some divine in intervention. You? Know, <laughs> you've got a giant great. titty monster at the end. Why yeah. wouldn't you have a kung fu priest? I know. It's yeah. great. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> See, I was the island. Like, well, we had kung fu. Bring on the titty monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? It's like, where do you top this? It yeah. just kind of has to keep on escalating. I, I really wish there would have been more Kung Fu Priest. The Kung yeah. Fu Priest. Dead. Who did he remind me of? What's his name in, uh, ironically, from Seinfeld? Um, the guy who played Jay Peterman, I think. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Like um, John American, O'Hurley? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. if there was an American version, he would be that priest. <laughs> that's, that's all I kept thinking about in this. It's funny you say American version, because I was like casting an American version in my head while we were watching it. Yeah. Like, mm, yeah. yeah, the American version would be this person. <laughs> so it's if, my favorite thing to do. Right. So what I came up with is if this movie had been made in the 80s in okay. America, okay. Crispin Glover would have been Lionel, for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. If it had been made in like the 2000s, it would have been Killian Murphy, I think. You know who he reminds me of? Who? 
Uh, is one? it Charl- Charlto Copley? Charles Copley, yeah. Charlto Copley, Copley, yeah. Yeah, that's it's what I was It's Timothy thinking. Baum in Dead Alive, but I don't know if that guy's had a career after I this. But he, I always thought he was. It seemed like a combination of Anthony Perkins and Jeffrey yeah. Combs. Yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. If they put him together. But yeah. then I saw Charlto Copley in it too. I'm just like, yeah. he'd be in it. He'd be good because mm-hmm. the setup kind of borrows a little bit from Psycho. I mean, maybe a lot. It does. That's the first yeah. thing I thought. I'm like house mother. Yeah. Awkwardly, it's got all the setup son. of Psycho. It yeah. Really does. Yeah. He's constantly dealing with mother issues. Mm. Mm-hmm. Feels a little mm-hmm. psycho ish. Mm-hmm. And this, uh, I guess, that becomes the main. And see, this is why I also think that the movie works on you know a, a number of different levels. It's like as a dramatic through line, the idea that you know Lionel has to break free of his overbearing mother so he can go with the girl that he loves. And I guess the first act, Paquita. where we're saying it's a little slow. It actually, you know, I was surprised this time. I'm like, wow, it is. It's giving us time to get to know these people and yeah. setting up all these dynamics that all of them seem to pay off like later mm-hmm. on in the movie. So I'm like, this is actually tight screenwriting, Peter yeah. Jackson. Right. Considering. Like before. Right. I mean, because yeah. it's 97 minutes. I mean, minutes comparatively, yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it really yeah. is. Yeah. And just because we, I mean, maybe we're going into this, we know what's coming. So we're just like, oh, all right, let's, you know, let's move on and let's get to it. But it, it really is. It's it's tight enough where you end up like, you know, I end up liking these characters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not just, it's just like, all right, let's just get to the thing. It's just like, all right, I like her. I like him. It's like, all right, it, it works. Yeah. I like where we end up with them. And, you know, I think you have to. I mean, considering as crazy as it gets at the end, like you're rooting for these characters to like live through this right. crazy stuff that's happening to them at the end. Mm-hmm. Considering the, you know, there's a baby zombie after them most of the time. <laughs> I, wish, I wish Fernando the dog would have lived a little longer. Your uh, mother like, ate my mother, dog. <laughs> uh, yeah. I would have liked to see Fernando. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I, oh well, I would have liked to see Fernando turn into a zombie and have a zombie dog running around this movie in addition to the baby. That's yeah. what I would have wanted to see. see. I, I'm, I'm solid. I'm good with the amount of animal Deadness. Right, especially because yeah, especially because they pulled that. I don't. Fucking well, it probably have to be <laughs> like a. Uh, you either have to. I mean, like, how would you do it? I guess that's the thing. It'd either be a like claim, you know, the the stop mm-hmm. motion, yeah. or they'd put a real dog in a suit or something. They did that for Alien Three. They put a they put little suits on whippets, mm-hmm. little whippets, and um, there's actually footage of it. They didn't end up using it because it was hilarious and not yeah. terrifying. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it worked. Yeah, yeah, it worked. Yeah, worked right. Right. yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Little whippets. <laughs> <laughs> they had like little like helmets they put on him and little like um like outfits they attached to their back to make them look like little xenomorph dogs. It was adorable, mm-hmm. but Aww, it never made it to the movie because it's just too cute. <laughs> God, I wonder why the decision was to set this movie in like the 1950s. I'm assuming it was the 50s. Yeah, it said um when she died on her headstone, it said 1957. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, did it? Yeah, because oh. I was checking for that because the aesthetic was very 1950s. I was like, is that on purpose? The clothing and the cars, cars and the music and the fact that the greasers and the fact that there was. Actual like radio programs, yeah. Yeah, I, well, so. I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't. Uh, I guess because it was New Zealand, I wasn't like. I'm like, man, that's what it's like in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, they're, they're fifty years behind. But, yeah. but if you look at like all the little like the delivery car is like this big, and yeah. the fire truck is like this big, it's yeah. just like it's like all right, that makes sense. But I'm just like, I think maybe was, things are smaller there. I don't know. I think it was Peter Jackson's nod to like the fifties. That makes the drive-in sense. movies. Yeah. yeah, I think it was. What what, what sealed the deal for me on it definitely being the fifties before we saw like the proof on the headstone which like heads up filmmakers check your continuity with your headstones uh if you're ever going to show a date on a headstone because that'll make or break a movie um texas chainsaw 3d did a real big mistake with that one so just keep your continuity or just don't show the headstone at all you know Mm. but um before we saw that and got the date i knew it was the 50s not only from the cars and the outfits but because the uncle is he has the exact same hair piece as Jerry Lee Lewis, but he has the same yeah. jacket as the Big Bopper. Yeah. So like he's uh-huh. nodding two different huge musical references yeah. that died two years after. And I think on the know. radio or uh, Lionel made a reference to a, I think it was a, I believe it's a a, a guy who went to the Arctic or something like that, but it, Edmund, uh, I'm forgetting mm-hmm. the fucking name, but he says like he's about to go on a new expedition or something oh, like yeah. that. And I'm like, yeah. I think that was in the 50s, but mm-hmm. I am... And the Not one dude sure. freaking out that they needed another war. Yeah. We yeah. need a new war. And you yeah. got the guy, the, the German, uh, the, the Nazi the vet. Yeah. 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 The Nazi vet. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. What do you want? <laughs> Yeah, Peter Jackson himself uh, shows up in a cameo. This is before he grew the beard and uh, stopped wearing shoes. Also had a 50s haircut, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. 
uh, as a vet assistant. No, he, sorry, he's the uh, Undertaker's assistant. Yeah. assistant. Yeah. Eat a sandwich. Undertaker's Eat a sandwich. Eat a sandwich. Like you do. Check that work. bingo yeah. square. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking time. <laughs> God damn. I'm, okay. That's what I look for now. Anytime there's a Morgan in a movie, I look for the sandwich. Unfortunately, yeah. they cut that scene in Maniac Cop, though. Yeah. Is they there, missed uh, there should be has someone gone overboard and just had like one of those party subs sitting on a court. Oh, oh, man. Yes. Like that needs to happen. We're putting that in our movie. Whatever movie we make, we're putting that in. It's like, oh, you're really hungry, aren't you? It's like, I'm a mortician. <laughs> this is what, uh, I love ready. it. We just I eat around, it. eat off the Six dead. Six foot sandwich. I love it. And yeah, regular maybe, people maybe eat a... off geishas. <laughs> yeah. Morticians eat off the dead. It'd be funnier if it was a shorter corpse, so the six foot sug hung off either end of it. Yes. <laughs> well, it's like a baby corpse. All right, are we writing this down? Because we're not going to remember this. We we're recording. We're literally recording it, Colin. Yeah. That's that's a good point. Colin. <laughs> Sean, remember but is it we being were... brailed, Sean? Is it being brailed we're though? Literally digitally writing it down. <laughs> brailed later. Okay? I'm paying to have this all brailed, all 200 and something episodes. Don't worry. Yeah, there will be a book before yes. uh, we all die. Um, Don't show it, freak show it. Coming in 2000 is <laughs> 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 all right, so Lionel, uh, poor chap, is, you know, he's got all these zombies uh, mating in his living room. He does. He's, well, or his, uh, first of all, he's decided, uh, he's decided to collect them. Yeah, he's yeah. just caring. Because he them. runs into most of them, or they become zombies within the graveyard. Within well, the... he sees it as his problem. I guess right? so. That's like, what he's got to keep it and deal with it, because yeah. he keeps putting them to sleep with the tranquilizer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. He's got he... the put-upon, stressed-out nature of a Jason Bateman character, you yeah. know? Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. God, well, here I go again. Yeah. 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 Again, so yeah. he brings them all home. Yeah, he doesn't tell anybody about this. No. He's pushing Bakita away because she like wants have to, responsibilities now. Yeah. She wants to help out. She wants to like be a part of his life, and he's like, no, no, no. You know, I got to yeah. deal with this myself. I have weird things going on, Bakita. <laughs> Don't follow me home. Yeah, this is all because of the Sumerian uh, rat, rat monkey, monkey. Rat bite. fucking rat yeah. monkey. It's the thing that turns you into yeah. a zombie. Yeah, anything Sumerian is just not mm -hmm. good, as we know by Sumatran? Ghostbusters. Yeah, Ghostbusters. Yeah, Ghostbusters <laughs> like, yeah, anything Sumerian is just not good. Just no. It might have been Sumatran. I think it was Sumatran, actually. Yeah. yeah I think Sumerians are very Well, old. they're like next door. <laughs> well, well, anyway. I don't know. We're Americans. What do we know? We're not here to give a geography no, lesson. No, we are not at all. <laughs> or do math. Or, yeah, or do math. <laughs> yeah, where is Skull Island, actually? <laughs> Somebody tell me. Where's the map? You'll We're making that reference yeah. because they get the rat monkey from Skull, Skull Island. You'll recognize that scene, though, when they're on Skull Island going through the caverns. You'll recognize that from Lord of the Rings, uh, the, the Path of the Dead, <gasps> I think. Oh, it is. It is. I thought it looked a familiar. Lot of this, a lot of this movie had shared locations So they run into the, the spider? Rings. No, he no. finds the undead army. Yeah. Oh, yep. okay. Mm -hmm. Well, he's in New Zealand. That he can get sense. around. Mm -hmm. um, so the, there's this uncle who I guess oh, yeah. plays the main antagonist of the movie. Essentially, because he's the only one that you really want to die. Yeah. Yes. But he's also remarkably capable at like staying alive. Okay, so all the shit gets going because eventually there's a party at the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where the uncle brings over, you know, as he's trying to maneuver Lionel out of mm -hmm. his uh, inheritance, brings over like the entire town. And of course, you know, all hell starts breaking loose. Right. Um, but this guy, you know, he's an interesting character, A, because I think the actor like had the right tone, like knew the tone of this movie. And pulls it off like uh, uh, extremely well. I mean, I guess everybody does. Lionel yeah. is very mm -hmm. into, like all this entire cast had to be like so game to do this, right? For the amount of shit that they we're had, gonna, to, yeah, we're gonna dump a lot of shit on you. You okay with that? We're gonna yeah, well, yeah. shoot it at you with a fire hose. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Just you got to be game for it. Yeah, honestly, like thinking about like when we were watching this and thinking about the practical effects and the gallons of fake blood and everything, I was like, this is making me exhausted watching this, just thinking about how they made this movie. Yeah. You know, oh. like the continuity alone. Can yeah. you, you fuck up a scene, you got all this blood sprayed. What do you do? You could do mop it all up and do it again, I uh, guess. Like, well, you think of just like that's the why simplest you shoot close ups. Thing. Like, yeah. What he did for a lot of this movie. Uh -huh. A lot of it, yeah. Yeah, with the little, the whip pan or whatever, not the yeah. whip pan, sorry, the, uh, the, the screen wipe, which is basically uses a, uh, 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 like something passing the screen, yes, to yeah. wipe between the actual actor and the yes, the, the mm -hmm. especially with like the punch through the mouth of the he does, the head getting I love it. the yeah. face getting torn yeah, off. He, I mean, like yeah. the 
all of it is but like it, amazingly it, fast. It's yeah. amazingly fast and done well. Like yeah. it, it comes across very well. So I'm like, oh, that's because it comes across as very cool. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh shit, now her head's like, and you get that point of view where she's like looking back as her head's tilted back. Like he pulls it off really well. But imagine the setups that you'd have from oh. a filmmaker point of view. The the amount of camera setups that you would have to do. I mean. It like stresses me out thinking about yeah. it, man. Like I can't, I can't, I could not have worked on this movie. The one thing that would have been the most stressful, I have to tell you, the lawnmower scene. Um, Robert uh, Taylor was the the gore specialist, as you will, and they couldn't figure out how else to do that scene, so they literally, <laughs> the dude stood there. What's his name? The main main guy, Lionel. Lionel, Lionel. yeah. He stood there with an actual running lawnmower, and the gore specialist shoved wax, like, limbs filled with, like, fruit uh-huh. puree, and shoved them into the blades. That's what it looks like. That's literally yeah. what he did. So he's standing there on this, like, gore-covered floor, oh, slipping God. around, yeah. and he, with an actual lawnmower blade going, and he's just shoving it in there. That's what it looks like. He could have died. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. He could have yeah, died. lost a couple fingers, if, if yeah. nothing else. Yeah. Insane. Like, everyone on the set was so stressed out about that, and he's yeah. like, well, I'll do it. Sure. Start feeding that shit in there. Yeah. There's so many crazy effects. I I mean, he does everything that, like, you know, Tom Savini or George Romero had been known for. You know, you get a bunch of zombies around, you're going to have to, you know, eviscerate someone who's alive and pull their entrails out, pull their. Uh, a rib cage out right, of the body. Rib- yeah. oh, so wow. many people sitting through false floors. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so many. So, yeah. Some of them, so I many. could not I, like even watching it tonight. Are I'm like, for the I don't know how you do that. The the greaser eventually loses his lower. Dude, head. I, the greasers <laughs> are my favorite fucking part of this movie. And I want a zombie greaser around, spinoff. Like with his own. Like he's using his legs as crutches. Right. And I'm like, where is where is he? Yeah, where is where he? Is he? This? There's also one where he's just like. He is only half a body, and he's using his hands to go across the yeah. floor. Yeah. But it's him. Like he's there. It's like great. they shot it at with such an angle. We're just like they're doing this brilliantly because I can't yeah. see who the other half of him is right now. Yeah, it's and he's fantastic. just walking across the floor. Like they pull it off really well. Yeah. Or that guy that got like his like waist down eaten, but still had shoes on. But he, like he still had the he still had the moving? bones. Like the yeah. bones of his moving legs around, were moving around. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, just the, it's like boundless kind of uh, demented imagination yeah. that I yeah. wish I had, you know? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah same. <laughs> but you sit there going like, Christ, did this? I mean, I always wonder about these people. Like, did they come up with them, these ideas? Are they just like overflowing with it and they just can't stop it? I and they have like, for all the ones that worked in the movie, there's like a hundred waiting to come out. Or is it, it takes years of thinking, you know, you're at the grocery store and you're like, Huh, you know what? I got an, I'm looking at this tub of borax, and I got an idea how I could use that for you know. But I think that's it. Like I think there are just lists of for special effects guys. Is like I want to try this. I want to try this. I want to try this. Mm-hmm. They have these ideas, and they're just sitting on boards. And they're just like, I got this idea. We could do for this. They, I'm sure that most of these guys just have tons of ideas. They're just waiting to give the directors like, we need something for this. Like, all right, well, I've always thought about doing this mm-hmm. because that's I, I got to believe that's what they do. Like. They're told to do certain things and they can pull them off, but they're also just got to, like, imagine certain things. Like, one guy had to have been, like, guy gets his lower half pulled off, but he's still mm-hmm. got his shoes on and he can see his leg yeah. bones hanging yeah. on. Like, and they figure out cool. how to do it and they're yeah. like, you know what? I got this one day. I'm going to get to use this. Exactly. Yeah. They'll, they're In like, I'm going to put that away, but that's a good idea. And like, oh, yeah, they definitely, this stuff is just coming to them. Mm-hmm. Or the light bulb lady. Like, the lady yeah. that her, her, like, the back of her head gets shoved onto a light bulb that's on the wall, so her whole face and eyes are lighting awesome. up. Great look. And awesome. but that like the, the continuity in this movie is so great that like for the rest of the movie she's in the background of like every shot in that room yeah. still lighting up. <laughs> yeah, it's so great. Yeah, oh, good effect. I like the reoccurring theme that the uncle keeps getting kicked in the crotch constantly. Hitting everything the balls. that yeah. had to have been what like it. ten to twelve times he yeah. got hit in the crotch, balls. right? Yeah. I love it. Like he's a guy that you're like by the character. You're like he deserves like all yeah. of this. Yeah. <laughs> Even the mom grabs his balls at the end of it. Yeah. Like <laughs> done. that was his final like demise. Was, it was getting grabbed by the balls one that more was time. Great. That was great. But I, even then, like I mean, you know, he gets you know he looks like he gets killed by having his uh, his entire head and spine ripped out in a shadow oh yeah oh it's so awesome but to see him after like you think that's a 
Okay, you think that's, that's it? Think. It's like Return of the Living Dead three. But he's Great. still wandering around with. Yeah, that's right. Did they do it? They did. That. They did. Yeah. But they had to have been taking it from this, obviously. And I'm, I'm sure you probably mentioned it in the Return of the Living Dead three. I don't know. I may have forgotten. Maybe, this. but it's Return of the Living Dead three. Spine zombie. Yeah. Spine zombie. Great. His head's Love like it. on a stick, basically yeah. floating uh, above his body. That's great. Yeah. And the Spanish girl grabs it and is actually swinging his head around by his spine. Mm hmm. Wonderful. It's madcap. Wonderful. I mean, it's, yes. that's it what I'm saying. It's like to, des- movie. to describe the tone of this is like, is it like Three Stooges? I'm trying to nail it down. We said Looney Tunes. Plastic. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The editing rhythms are like, you know, like spot on. I don't know. This is like, you know, an achievement, I think. Yeah. Uh, it also movie. figures out a way to uh, morph. Morph? Pro, or morph, pro, to give a personality to an inanimate object. Anthropomorph. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so that's what I was trying to. <laughs> never gonna. Every time on this show, I try to say that word. Can't keep tripping over it. Uh, anamorph. The, like, anamorph is what you're going for. Anamorph. It's, 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 it's it anamorph. like you're talking to someone who's got a weird name. Like morph. Yeah. yeah. Morph. What do you think? Anamorph. Porphyzize. <laughs> Anthropomorphize. Anthropomorphize a set go. of lungs, uh, a digestive <laughs> tract. Oh, and a sphincter. And a and sphincter that yep. farts. Yep. The oh, thing God. looks at itself in the mirror and the music and changes. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The guys, we're feeling emotions for lungs and a sphincter right now. Yeah. Like. <laughs> but it becomes one of the main, uh, I guess. Antagonist? Protagonist. Yeah, I, I would say protagonist. Like antagonist it's like the, just like an <laughs> obstacle, basically. Right. For the, it's like the, what is it, the brain that crawls or something? Like, wasn't there a thing? Wow, what the fuck am I thinking of? The brain that wouldn't die. The brain that, it's probably the brain that wouldn't yeah. die where it just crawls after you and all that shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The brain that Maybe, die. yeah. I haven't seen that, but it could be. Yeah. There's a, there's a brain that doesn't die. Got but this it. is like spoiler. Crazy. Wow, way to spoil the movie, <laughs> sorry, Sean. Sorry. Wow. But this is kind of a crazy thing, right? Like it's going on because it can do things. You're you're thinking, and I guess this is how the movie keeps on ramping up or stepping up its uh its absurdity level, mm-hmm. right? Is because you're like, okay, you know, somebody gets bit by a rat monkey, they turn into zombies. Okay, then we they got a other baby people, zombie, zombies. and then we've got zombies. But once you bring in, like, <laughs> the guts are moving around, and they're a thing that's, the like, guts attacking the you. zombie. Yeah. It can do things that a person can't, uh-huh. such as shooting, uh, you know, it's uh, the intestines out and, like, <laughs> you yeah. know, wrapping them around things. And it's all and crawling making, all Making its like, way around, like, the house and crawling into the, the attic and everything and yeah. going after him. Because you could tell it's, like, a hand, like... Yeah, they just yeah, the other yeah. part is like it's a false <laughs> part and they're just crawling after it but like it's good it's effective the uh-huh. funny thing is um in that interview that i read with um robert taylor he, he's talking about the moment that he realized how ridiculous this movie is is when the zombie baby which the running around zombie baby was played by a two-year-old oh they, no that they we put can a mask tell on. which is great yeah he goes <laughs> he said the moment that he realized how ridiculous, ridiculous this was is the moment they started filming the shot where she's running away and the grown man is chasing her with a cleaver and she's actually screaming out of real terror uh, he's like oh, what movie no. are we making right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's like what am i doing <laughs> yeah that's like Jesus. some pet cemetery yeah. stuff right where it just gets to the point where you're just like either this is something that's going to be people are just going to love this or just like i'm never going to be able to talk about this again yeah it's yeah. like i have to hide this and say I wasn't a part of it. Yeah. Oh, no, he's really or it's going to be a Campbell. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, or it's going to be a Campbell Holocaust situation where you have to go to court and prove yeah, that you didn't like, murder people, uh, you know, or didn't abuse children. Baby. Uh, yeah. Luckily, it worked. He's alive mm-hmm. to this day. Yeah. Well, it's it's like it's a. Do we say it's a practical? It's like a puppet on the close-ups. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then when it cuts to the, like the long shot, but I mean, it's, it's again, like it's like a child it's play. running when you though. See the long yeah. Shots of uh, somebody the 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 guy playing Chucky. Yeah. Or it's just yeah. He's running away and everything. It's basically looks like that, but it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute little demon baby. It's cute little demon baby. And then there's laugh. then there's mom or mother. Herself oh, mother! At, at the end, where again the movie like you're like, what in the hell now? Because now it's like this gigantic <laughs> fucking big puppet. hand going. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best. The big claw tapping the uncle on the, the shoulder. Best. Ta- it's tab- fantastic. Because it's just it's just dead quiet. And you just hear on the shoulder, just like. All right, yeah. bravo! And like, you've been I'm through in. so I much. It. I love what it. Are you doing? I'm what in. is she? <laughs> you've been through Tit monster. Great. <laughs> been through so much at this point. You're like, what the fuck could it be now? Right. Like what now? Like, now they're just going straight for like, oh, absurdist comedy. We yeah. got you right here. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is all explained because he accidentally, instead of injecting them with tranquilizers, injected them with uh, it's like animal animals. stimulants. He's, yes, or he tried to poison them to like actually try to kill right. them. It's poison to humans, and, but it's an animal animal stimulant. Yeah, yeah. so That's they become a, like super zombies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her I mother's mean, been dead the longest, so she turns into giant puppet. Like, yeah, it's, it's like a day thing, the dead puppet. Yeah, oh, yeah. How do you? I mean, it's probably the weakest effect. You know, to be fair. Sure, in the but I think movie. they. But if they looked at him and like, eh, all right, we're yeah. gonna go with it. You can. I think you can get away with it based on the tone of the movie, mm-hmm. right? Like, if it was a serious movie, the movie would collapse. Right. Yeah. Be at done. this point, you're like, I don't buy it. But right. you know the fact. But that, the fact that she tapped the dude on the shoulder. <laughs> Yeah, but gives the it a little. Uh, yeah, just I love it. She's got a giant ass and giant breasts yep. and like this big skull face that must have been. I mean, I assume there's like cranes and shit. Yeah, yeah. puppeteering oh, yeah. this gigantic be. fucking thing has to be because it's at least as tall as three people probably yeah. standing. I would know. say so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God damn. I was gonna say that, or do we like? That or I guess like some scenes probably could be like a model, right? Like made on a like a, a set. There are some of the just, some of the like behind shots probably could have been. Some of the things are like you can tell where they show some of the uh, uh, looking up scene uh, shots at the house. Mm-hmm. There's a little a little model woman yeah. hanging off a house. <laughs> and it's fake. Yeah, because I'm just like that's not real. That person is three inches tall. Yeah. So some of those shots, I'm sure there are. They're just smaller models of mm-hmm. them. But it's cool. I think yeah. it adds to the effect of the movie. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I was wondering if there were some model shots at the beginning with the uh, trolley cars on the street. I was thinking that's that too. What I was the thinking trolley, too. Yeah. There had to be, right? Too. But also, they're but just there like, were real trolleys. They are because they're just thin trolleys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, weird. They model trolley. I don't know. But right. it looks they like, look a model. like it. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe the they people weren't. aren't moving in the right. trolley. Yeah. I guess that was it. I remember that there was one specific shot. I'm like, why? That's a model. Why is that a model? Yeah. That's what I was wondering too. I'm just like. I can't see the reason for it to be a model, so why would it be a model? But maybe it just looks like that, but you know, it kind of looks like a model. Everything else, I'm not questioning it. But they have know? just like really thin trolleys moving throughout the cities. It's like, mm, all right, that's weird. It's got like two people standing side by side. But I digress. <laughs> Giant tit monster mother. Yeah. There it is. And Lionel has to confront his demon literally. He does. Quite literally. And get rid of mother so he can uh, uh, be with, uh, oh, God, I forget. Uh, Paquito. Paquita. Paquita. Like Bianca? No, Paquita. Paquita. Yeah. Who's just so adorable. She, yeah, she's. Yeah. She works. She works for me. She's a little button. Mm-hmm. She's a little button. <laughs> I know the casting is like, it's really good. I it's think really, it's good. Like really good across the board. Yeah. And like where you find all these, I mean, it's there's just something to the, uh, you know, the <clears throat> skewed. You know, I mean, having a lot of some of these di- lines set, I guess, in, uh, you know, uh, New Ze- you know, with that New yeah. Zealand accent or whatever, they're yeah. just, you know, it's primed for the, the co- comedic effect. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not yeah. saying anything about. <laughs> no, it's charming. <laughs> yeah, it's charming. It's charming. It's charming. It's, yeah. it's charming. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and it fits I the tone. Like in the it movie. Does. I think so. I think it helps. He gets ingested by mother. Yeah, she yeah. her womb literally opens and yeah, takes him back. Him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he has to cut himself out, and then it's like shining blood, right? Like yeah. this thing it opens up and out. dumps. It's actually five gallons per second. Yeah. of blood. Mm-hmm. It is, is that a record of some type? It, Let's it, yeah. Did we it look ends up this being like three hundred liters or something like that. It's insane. is it in Guinness? This movie? Uh, it should I don't be. know. And then he gets like dumped out in what? Like, like I'm guessing Monster Mother's placenta. It feels like it <laughs> yeah. has to break out of. <laughs> oh, at the end he has of the to movie. be born again. Right? Yeah, basically, like the new, yes. the new, new man. He is born he again. Escape from yeah. Uh, escape from mother. Yeah. It's all, it's, that's what that's why is. the movie escape, works. That's what life right? is, an yeah. escape from your mother. Yeah. Yeah. From beginning to end. That's what I'm saying. Dramatically, is. this movie works. Like, the subtext, I think, works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It makes sense. I would say so. All right. Coming up in an hour. Do we yeah. have any random stray observations about this film before we do our wrap-ups and review it? Uh, the tarot card deck that she was using in the beginning, that is not the typical Rider weight tarot cards that you that like are, it. it is yeah. um 
did, so they did the research. Is it, it Kiwi? Is, it is Aleister Crowley's tarot oh, deck. Yeah, yeah. Really? yeah uh, the Thoth deck, which is uh, like he rewrote and redesigned tarot cards when he was doing all his thing. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was an interesting choice because that is definitely a choice. That's not. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, that's it's somebody who knows this stuff. I mean, yeah. Yeah. this is a horror aficionado making a movie. Yeah. He's in all this. I mean, he has Forrest Ackerman show up, mm-hmm. uh, the yeah. editor of Famous Monsters of Filmland magazine. Yeah. For a brief moment mm-hmm. in the park, the man is a fan. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. That's I think. Yeah, he's a he's a fan of this stuff and yeah. has absorbed it, and digested it, right, and mm-hmm. really likes doing it. And it would be cool if he pulled like a Sam Raimi and went back and did like you know like yeah. Sam Raimi did with Drag Me to Hell. If mm-hmm. Peter Jackson would go back and do something like that, would uh, be great. You know, his early films. Mm-hmm. Maybe he feels like <clears throat> yeah. he needs to. After Should Peter the Jackson go back to this? Can style? he go back? Can he I? Go back? Yeah. I think he should, but I don't think he will. It's like do something with like we have to use your imagination. Well, I, I, I think you use Peter, your imagination Peter, for CGI. Peter Jackson but, did yeah. this. You're just like, yeah. Mm, all right. I don't know if you went back to something like this. I don't know. I can't say I'd go see it. I don't know. Depends what it would be. <laughs> I've, I've, you know, yeah. you've been hurt before, right? I, I mean, so you no. don't want to, you don't I mean, want to get hurt we, again. We decreed in the last Peter Jackson movie we did that he's just he's. <laughs> I think we said he's not a good director, which I mean, the things or I didn't like him as a director. Maybe put it that way. Aside from like things like Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. um, and I hadn't seen Dead Alive at that point, but right. I think I decreed him that was just like I get what he did with Lord of the Rings and everything. I'm just like, yeah, other than that, just like mm, not mm. for me. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I don't know. I don't know if he even went back to this. If I would go back and see it, well, and also, Maybe. and also, I mean, comparatively, this is grouped in with uh, Bad Taste and Meet the Feebles. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen either of those movies, but from what I've read, this one is the the preferred of yeah. the three. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So I'm like, if this is the best one, and like he's had other two that weren't quite up to par, mm-hmm. I don't know if he could do this again and it still be this entertaining. Yeah. Maybe everything kind of came together for yeah. this one. Plus, it's got the, you know, the lawnmower, the goriest scene ever, which, I mean, I knew before yeah. I even knew what this movie was. Although, the box art in this movie is something I've been looking at for a long time. I didn't even see it. It's pretty irrelevant. It doesn't, like, it line doesn't, up with anything no, no, no. in the movie, really. It doesn't, but it's also, like, one I've it's seen good. since I was a kid. Yeah, yeah no, like, it's iconic. It's like the, the, the skull back. coming through oh, the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Your mouth yeah. open and the skull's behind it. I've been yeah. seeing that forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Never knowing that it was, like, dead alive. It's yeah. iconic. It's just irrelevant to the movie. Yeah. That's, you know. Basically. Yeah. I mean, there's the scene where it happens, but... <laughs> the face gets pulled off the one dude in this movie, yeah. which is also yeah. a great effect. Yeah. They did that it's, in Wolf Cop. They did. Yeah. And it screamed, which is yeah, the best part of that movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. You're yeah. just like, ah! I'm not sure the face pull is the most iconic that they thought it was going to be. No. But it's still like. It's but fun. like the way it's demonstrated yeah, yeah. in the cover art is like she's pulling her mouth and like it's like a smaller head inside yeah. the yeah. mouth. Yeah, you know, weird. it's like it's different. It's not yeah, the same yeah. kind of. It doesn't yeah. tell you what's coming in this movie. No, not at all. Really? But they didn't want to give that away. Well, I don't, I don't think you could give this movie away in a cover. No. It looks. No. It doesn't look scary. It does. No, no, it, it looks, looks very no. like creep show yeah, or yeah, like yeah. you know, exactly. um, yeah, anything yeah. sort of like tamer like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it kind of sells again. I guess I'm going for that tone, it's right? Like, or, or it's unless you're just like, hmm, I'm interested. She's pulling her face away. There's a <laughs> yeah. tiny skull in a there, small mouth inside of it. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm all for that. <laughs> All right, well, so mm-hmm. shall we summon our mailman Igor and get to list some listener mail? Probably. We shall. All right, well, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Well, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Thanks. All right. Uh, <laughs> he so didn't far. dress up. Go this away, way. Igor. <laughs> It'd be t- we would not tolerate custard pudding outfit. Anything from him this week. No. So. Don't eat anything. No. We, no. Yeah, we told him we don't want any food. Yeah. We don't want any outfits yeah. this never week. Nothing. We don't know what kind of. Not the week to dress up Igor. Yeah. yeah, never. He's let him always food. leaking. Yeah, yeah. Like it's never let him prepare your gross. food. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, this guy's gonna have such a complex. Li- um, okay, so about dead alive. And we again, I should remind you, we hope that you'll write in about our episodes that we do or we post on Facebook what we're going to be doing. Write in and let us know what you think of these movies. We'll read your comments on the air or past episodes that we've done. You can get us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Saturday Freak Show. 
Email Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com or Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Sean Roger writes in and says, I kick ass for the Lord oh, is one of the greatest lines in cinematic history. <laughs> You're damn right. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, why couldn't we I get want more? I see more people saying that they kick ass for the Lord. I did. I was partial to this deserves some d- divine intervention when he jumped down first yeah, of that. That was, was great. He was just so ready. Like, you know what? He's so <laughs> ready. Like he's been, he was a very angry yeah, he was priest. He's a very angry priest. Yeah. Like, he's been preparing for this. He's like, I have nothing to do here but bless these he's people. He's a soldier of God. That's you know what he's got going on. You know why it feels unfulfilled is because he didn't hit the rule of threes. He only did two one liners. He didn't do a third. Uh, That's yeah, why it no, feels uh, like we're missing something. Like, just before he got impaled, he on needed the finger, one more. There needed to be one yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. Or just as he was dying, she's like, oh, Yeah. This yeah. sucks. Oh, yeah. Okay. Or, to God. <laughs> uh, Johnny Zombie Boy writes in. Oh. And because oh, we, we asked, is it the goriest movie ever made? He said, hell yes, it is. Everyone, every time someone says, oh, my God, Kill Bill is the bloodiest movie ever. No. I no. say, not dead alive, close. sucker. Not even close. That's right. There's a lot of blood in the movie, but yeah. it's not even close. No, we watched uh, Shogun Assassin, which is what that's pretty Bill bloody. Bill is pretty but much aping. It's got the bright red blood. Too. Yeah, but it yeah. sprays anytime right. anybody gets. But this is just sheer quantity and just there's a pool. At it's the sticky. End. This yeah. movie is sticky. It's drippy. It is. It's yeah. Drippy. yeah, drippy and sticky. <laughs> Hellraiser is a pretty goddamn gory movie too, oh, but yeah. it's not in this not like this you know yeah. swept. Yeah. I know, that's a gross. <laughs> gross. <laughs> gross. Uh, the B-Movie Poster Vault says whether or not it's the bloodiest movie ever made depend on the cut you get. If the running time is 104 minutes, which is the original New Zealand cut, uh. then it's a strong contender. The U.S. originally got an 85-minute Hack to Pieces version, then an unrated cut. But he says, which is what we watched tonight, but he says that was still seven minutes shorter than the Kiwi version. You're going to love it. So long as you have a twisted sense of humor, although I advise not eating lunch beforehand. We had pork chops. Yeah, we we, we ate right we before this. Have yeah. Rare steak. We've got so we stomachs yeah. of steel. Yeah, yeah, we can take it. Yeah. Uh, about our episode, our, our previous episode about the movie Metal Storm: The Destruction of Jared Sin. Uh, we were joking that somebody should put out a toy based on the character of Ball. Ball. This is the character with the telescoping yes. arm. Yeah. And oh, I remember. Yeah. The flip, uh, <laughs> How I wish I could forget. Ah, <laughs> uh, Ball. Well, a listener named Goodleg Toy says they've been playing around with the idea more than once. Oh, oh my God, send us one. Oh, please do. Please send it. We will, spot, I, we will mention I your... I will mention yeah. you forever. Yeah. Please send us one. You. I just want it to actually spray some... Yeah, mm-hmm. have it, get that little like ball and hose that at the end. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Just spray and it sprays the stuff. little pump. Please. Yeah, a little yes. air pump. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Please. Please send us one to put on our I you know freak that. show wall of fame. Oh yeah, that'll go up on a wall. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't know it, folks, but there are action figures all around. Oh, yeah. us we right are now. surrounded. Please, we please send us one. We will put it up on the wall. <laughs> Uh, a Rivera writes in and says, I actually saw oh, this a. movie as a kid. Is this still Metal Storm? This is still Metal Storm. Yeah. He saw this movie as a kid, VHS rental way back. To this day, I have no idea what the fuck it was about. It Neither does do have we. a very cool poster, though. I am sorry you saw that as a child. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Metal Storm is a it's fucking... All, I think it's only good as a I'm child. I'm the only one who liked this movie, for those of you You're who didn't like that. You're the only one that continues to like this movie. Continue yeah. to like <laughs> it and continue to watch it, so I gotta defend its know. honor. It does have a cool poster, though. And B-Movie Poster Vault sent us a bunch of variants from around the world. Oh, nice. Oh, thank you. Awesome. That's awesome. Did you did you bring some to show us? Colin? We appreciate the uh, research. I, I have <laughs> oh, look at that. That's my, cool. Thank you, Colin. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just uh, unrelated, Wrestling Arcade writes in and says, great podcast. Hey, thanks. Oh, thank hey, thanks, you. man. Thanks for listening. We awesome. appreciate it. Yes. We, I like yeah. you. Thanks, everybody, <laughs> for writing I like in. You. I like you. It validates what we do here. It really does. Yeah. Because without you, what are we? Just talking about Depressed and talking about yeah. movies and drinking. <laughs> surrounded so. by action figures. Yeah, surrounded by action figures. So, <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Live the goddamn dream. Yeah. So we're going to go around the table. We're going to review the movie. You don't know how it's going to break down, do you? You don't know who's going to like it and who won't. Shocking. No. Colin. This is so suspenseful. Yes, Sean. What did you think about Dead Alive? Well, it's hard to talk about Dead Alive because it's mm. a goddamn classic and everybody's seen it. Am I right? Am I right? It's like that's full stop. Dead Alive is a Has horror movie it? classic. Well, see, this is the thing I'm coming to realize. It's one of the movies like. It's not? I think, you know, I was saying this on our reanimator 
uh, podcast. It's like, you know, as I talk to younger people, like these are the movies that they haven't seen. They've mm-hmm. all seen The Shining and the Texas Chainsaw sure. Massacre and, and all this. But like Hellraiser is starting to slip. Yeah, uh, Reanimator agree. slipping and Dead Alive, like you know, I oh, think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I think you Dead had to be there at, like, at a period of time. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. it hasn't. Well, it was on Blu-ray. I think Lionsgate put it out. Now it's like a hundred and forty-nine fucking dollars. Yeah, it's all it's out of print down, everywhere out of print. right now. Shit. So we need somebody like Arrow or Shout Factory, or, Shout Factory or somebody to you know, yeah. Shout Factory, Creek. we mention you every week. Just sponsor us Please. already. Yes. You know, God, we mention you every week and send us free shit. Well, the last the last version was done by Lionsgate so who puts their stuff on it but anyway I mean like we need to you know because it hasn't been on video at least in the states in a while I think you know it goes into that kind of uh moratorium land the where like the th- monster squad was where like yeah. nobody saw yeah. the monster squad or night of the creeps nobody right. knows night of the creeps and I think that the same thing's happening to dead alive which is unfortunate because this is I mean I think it's a classic of the genre. I mean, you know, again, I don't know if it's in, it's definitely in probably the top 100 horror films ever made. Uh, I think it's one of the goriest movies I've ever seen, but in a funny way. So mm-hmm. it's not, I never have been disgusted by it only because of every time I look at it, I'm looking at it, you know, like I'm seeing a magic show, you know, this is like some, it's, you know, this gory magic show, uh, where I'm trying to figure out, like, how in the fuck did they do that? Like Michaela was saying, the amount of work that, you know, when you try to reverse engineer it, uh, just boggles your mind. Uh, the amount of inventive imagination that's on display uh, on this movie is just, you know, like, a, a, it has to be recognized as an achievement of something, yeah. you know? Um and uh, I mean, I don't know if it's high art or whatever, but it's definitely, you know, I mean, this is an interesting, like we were saying, place to, to, to uh, or a piece of territory to say, I want to plant my flag here as the, I want to be the goriest movie ever made. But beyond that, I think it does actually work as both a comedy. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> and as you know, the dramatic structure of the film, I think checks out and it actually works as a movie. You know, yeah. I mean, so it is. That's why I'm saying it's a classic. It's like this is a good movie all the way through. I think you'll have a blast with it. They've tried to do stuff with this recently. Like, uh, you know, I mean, I saw a movie called Deathgasm, oh, right? Uh, yeah. Which is I, I liked it. Don't get me wrong. Or Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. But they never seem to be at, like I haven't seen anything recently. Somebody's going to remind me of something I saw. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, I forgot about that one. But I haven't seen anything recently that I remember that is better than what I saw in, like, the 80s and the 90s and this being one of them. You know, it's like I haven't seen the thing that is better than Dead Alive in this type of genre. But they didn't have giant tit monsters. Yeah, because we don't do the same more now. We just do haunted house movies Mm -hmm. all the time, which I love my haunted house movies. Don't get me wrong. But like, I would like a little bit, you know, this is the the area where, you know, creativity and uh, and these artisans working on these handcrafted. Like you said, things magic. Yeah. Movie magic. Magic. Yeah. And that's all gone now, even in the work of Peter Jackson and doing everything like CG and the toolkit right is the same for these guys who came up with these makeup effects it's rubber uh, liquid latex and all this other stuff but they each makeup artist had to have like their own or bring their own imagination to it which is why you'd hire like you know uh was richard taylor for you know his work uh um Tom Savini for his work. Steven or, you know, Johnson. All these guys, yeah, brought a specific flavor to it, where now it's like everybody uses the same toolkit. It's called 3D Studio Max, but everything looks exactly the fucking same. Like, you know, and all the monsters look the, that are designed look the same. Yeah. And all it's just, just kinda, gray ugh, yeah. monsters in my eye. How does that happen? I don't know, but, you know, that's kind of the depressing. Uh, yeah, it is kind of depressing where we're at, uh, mm-hmm. you know today so that's why you got to go back and look at dead alive uh it's i think it's great i think uh, you have to check this movie out fantastic sean what did you think of dead alive fantastic he says um i had not seen this movie uh before tonight i watched a trailer earlier today and i don't maybe it was the mood i was in i was just watching i was just like i don't know i'm not looking forward to watching this movie 
I feel like know. you say that about every movie I, I pick. I do, but maybe I'm just in a fucking mood lately. Maybe it is every movie you pick. For it some is. reason, I don't know why. I'm just like, I don't you really feel me. like watching. Wait, 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 I don't feel wait. like watching this movie is right this, now. Okay. I'm just putting this out there. Okay. It, when you watch the trailer, did it give off the '90s stank? I get. I. I I'm, when you when you go and find trailers on YouTube and everything, obviously, the, every time you find one, it's gonna be it's the worst looking trailer. Yeah. It's the worst quality. It's the in a world trailer yeah, too. Almost, yeah. So like, I shouldn't take them as an accurate representation about of what I'm about to see because it just it it kind of boils it down to just like the worst looking thing that could represent the movie you're about to watch. So, I mean, now that's probably my fault for finding those and seeking those out. If it had been a sequel set in L.A., would you have been like, I would really have been for excited? It, uh, yeah. I would be recommending it right now, hands down. Uh, yeah. But watching it tonight, like, it's... Uh, but it's first of all it's fun like just if you get past if if you don't look at the parts that are just like the gory craziness of this movie like um <laughs> like we said for Peter Jackson it's tight writing but um if it feels slow getting up to that point it's because it's he's working on the characters in this and i like these characters i i um i like them i like the build up that we get for them that kind of you know leads to the payoff of them fighting all the zombies at the end Oops, sorry um but it's and and then we get to the fucking crazy parts at the end and i'm always one who's going to appreciate practical effects mm-hmm. like that is if you can just do it right there and we're not cgi wonderful i love it it's uh and they do so many cool things in this movie uh, like we discussed earlier just the the quick cuts from you know actual people to effects they pull off wonderfully there's some just crazy stuff like we said the mother monster at the end it's just like they had to look at them and be like this is obviously ridiculous but if you're in watching this movie and you're in it you're just like yeah it's ridiculous but fuck there's a big mom mother monster like and she ingests him and spits him back out and just like if you're in for this movie this stuff is incredible and it's fun to watch and it's fun to think about the effort that was put into making these things and like we said it is magic they are actually they're pulling off magic in front of the camera and i love that um it's funny um i, I it's funny i like the characters the effects i think are great it is the grossest most disgusting thing and I say that in the most positive way I can (laughs) for me to watch a movie like I said a guy eating pudding and I'm just I can't watch the screen like they're doing something right something came together and 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 did it it just did it for me so it's it's a disgusting movie but it's enjoyably disgusting so I mean I recommend Dead Alive like I I think it is one of the uh, it's one of the all-time classics uh, as far as, you know, zombies, splatter. Like, it's you should see this movie. There's so much to appreciate in it, and I think you have to see it. So I definitely recommend it. So uh, Holly and I have talked a lot off mic about how it seems to be, if you're more towards our, like, age spectrum of the freak show, that when you, growing up, you stumbled across a Peter Jackson movie that you were not old enough to see and you mm. saw it uh, and, and it kind of scarred you for life and for most people it's either Bad Taste, Meet the Feebles or It's Dead Alive. For me it's Dead Alive, I think for you it's Dead yeah. Alive as well uh, for my boyfriend it's Meet the Feebles for other people I know it's Bad Taste and it's like Frighteners. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like it's, it's weird that like um, even though they're different movies, it's still the same shared experience of yeah. like this fucked up Peter Jackson story that like had weird practical effects that you cannot get out of your mind if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think making that kind of impression on anyone through film is an impressive feat. So the fact that he did that and then went on to do Lord of the Rings, like yeah. this guy has accomplished so much in such a short amount of time. It's amazing. And I feel like because we've, we like Lord of the Rings is out of the public consciousness right now that like, we don't give him the credit. He really deserves a lot of the time. I think we're still watching that lovely bones taste out of our mouth. A lot of the times so that we I forget, am. you know the how Hobbit great lingers. he was in the <laughs> Hobbit too. Yeah. It lingers. <laughs> <laughs> but this movie, I mean, it's just like if like uh, Evil Dead 2 is one of my favorite movies of all time. And I think that this is like a nice parallel to that movie. Um, it's the same kind of humor and the same kind of wackiness. But it just has a different taste being Peter Jackson versus Sam Raimi. And I, th- I like how, you know, I would really like to actually see this movie be remade. Um, with famous people, just because I would like to see how famous people would handle being put in this ridiculous kind of situation. If they went as far as yeah. they went in yeah. this movie, exactly. if it's no, exactly it's the farther, same, though. I think so. Yeah. But if yeah, they if they went at least as this far with like just people 
famous actors like George Clooney getting splat. That's the thing. I just want to see famous people punished with this movie is what it is. That's what I want to see. I don't actually want to remake. I just want to see famous people forced to be... Now I want to see George Clooney in this movie. Yeah, exactly. George Clooney and Penelope Cruz. What about From Dusk Till Dawn? That's... uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is gooey. This yeah, yeah movie's George gooey Clooney too. Wouldn't work in this. It needs to be someone younger. Yeah, I mean probably. Yeah. But like, you look at the guy that was in this movie, and he went on to do like next to nothing after he, this. Yeah, like, he was he was a New Zealand actor, so he did, he sure. was known for like a show um, and shows there. Oh, yeah, a show, yeah, or something. I don't know. Yeah, he's done a little bit, but all in New Zealand. But like he put in. But I like we were talking about like the effort in making this movie just looks exhausting. So oh, to yeah. know that he went through all this oh, and then it, he never got launched into stardom is really sad to think about. Actually, because yeah, he's dedicated. Yeah, yeah. It's like he's in every shot of this movie. Like pretty much start to finish, he he is in every shot. Yeah, yeah. Literal Mm -hmm. shit. Maybe at some (laughs) point, probably. There's a sphincter that is brought to life. I'm sure there's literal shit at some point. Remade. Literal shit would be included. Oh, it would be like you know, Dogma. That shit monster in Dogma. It'd be like that. Um. I don't need that. Anyways, this movie. It yeah, would, it really would. It would cheapen it. It would cheapen it. You're going for a cheap joke. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I don't need it. And actually, this movie, believe it or not, you might it is actually hi, like higher brow than that. Like yeah. it does not I mean, go for poop joke. One fart. Joke. But that's one fart. It. That's it. That's it is so that's quick. As low as it gets. <laughs> but it's it, it's a fart from a sphincter. Like just a sphincter, not not like an ass, like right, just right. a sphincter yeah. and an intestine, which is like a you know physiological feat I in itself. I've never seen that in a movie. Yeah, That's exactly, and you probably yeah. never will no, again. No, no, yeah. Not not yeah. since. Yeah. yeah. Um, Before or since. In the uh, in the TV series Flight of the Concords, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, mm-hmm. but there, there's a one of the characters in Flight of the Concords works in tourism for New Zealand, and one of the like he's always come up with these posters to like promote New Zealand, and one of them he says, "New Zealand, it's more than just Lord of the Rings," and I think that's probably an accurate representation of yeah. New Zealand. Like I think it's just very much like Lord of the Rings tourism, and you come here to see you know mm-hmm. like the Shire and everything. Like I, Peter Jackson does not get enough credit for the things outside of Lord of the Rings. And it's understandable because those are the Citizen Kane of fantasy movies and they're a feat in themselves. But this movie, like, I'm really, I am, not, Colin, now that you say that, I am worried about the drop off of, like, people completely forgetting about this movie. Yeah. Um, because you have to, you have to appreciate these movies because this, if they don't go through the, this, this is what produces, this produces Oscar winners. Yeah. This produces Best Picture winners. Like, you can't look at a, this movie or even, like, this genre in general because people tend to look down at like the horror genre or even splatter movies mm-hmm. they look down low brow it. as low brow as not as stupid maybe not as mm-hmm. artistic as other movies and you can't do that yeah. because this is what spawns these people who will make movies later that you love you can't just ignore look at what they where they came from and ignore it or discount it as i think is has been done and you know, right. can be done. Uh-huh. I don't think you yeah. can do that. So I think you have to look back at stuff like this and appreciate it. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think like we've talked about a bunch in this episode, but like the amount of creativity that went into the, the just the narrative of this movie and how people were killed and how, how like they should have been killed, but yeah, they're still going and they're still <laughs> alive. That's what got me is like every time you thought you saw the last of someone, they'd come back recovering from the trauma we just saw them go through that should have killed them. Right. But I, I definitely would recommend it. I think it's worth it, but you have to go into it with the open mind of it being a ridiculous over the top comedy if you think it's going to be serious um like the 2013 evil dead just just don't watch it like it's it's not serious like that movie it's very over the top and very comedic but if you like evil dead 2 this is definitely a nice parallel to that so i would definitely recommend it mm-hmm. um just now talking i realize this is my second new zealand based horror comedy i've brought to the show first was what we do in the shadows no oh, yep with vampires. jermaine clement yeah yep and now and now dead alive with zombies so i feel <laughs> jermaine like clement who was also in, who was in flight of the concords yep we talked so, about yep. that we are wolves or who would be the next one werewolves <laughs> should they ever make it yeah they're, yes they're yes. Wor- they're working on this is what we do in the shadows talk but they're working on a tv show about the cops from oh, that yeah, I heard about and that. it's yeah, they're yeah. like going to be para- paranormal cops <laughs> which i'm so on board with they uh, need to last i heard there's they're like it's in the works right now there's a table read whatever anyway <laughs> um so i I love zombie movies. You guys know this. Um, this was the first of of uh, my fall undead series. Um, I, I feel like we've all already said so much about this movie. I, I feel like there's there's not much else I can say to wrap it up. I love it so much. Um, it's 
it inspired a lot of a lot of movies. And I don't think people realize, like I said, Shaun of the Dead was heavily inspired by this movie. Um, I think it's just an amazing compilation of horror and comedy and it and the tight writing. And it, it's just everything works so well. And I think even though the parts of it feel slow, I don't know if it was if it was um, deliberate, but I feel like it almost was kind of deliberate just so at the end you're just bombarded with the gore. It's just so unexpected. And I think if like, I knew it was coming. So it, it felt slower to me just cause I'm waiting for it to happen. Um, but I think, I think it works as a buildup. I definitely think it just, it flows well enough that you don't lose interest in it. Um, the practical effects are literally magical like Colin said it's so enjoyable you're not you're not gonna see a movie like this it's so it's so special it's it's very one of a kind and I'm I was so impressed that when I found out that it was Peter Jackson when I first saw it I, I had no idea that he was capable of this kind of movie um I would love to see him tap into this this passion again. I, th I think he could be an incredible director, but we've, we've lost something in the past years. Um, but I, I feel like the, everyone should see this movie. It's so classic. It's hilarious. It's disgusting. Like Sean said, it is the grossest movie I've ever seen, but in a wonderful way. It made me a little um, nauseous at some points, honestly. It really did. It's so the gross. The pudding scene I had to look away from. It's pudding. so I'll never look gross. at pudding the same way again. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think if you are a horror aficionado, if you haven't already seen this, you are wasting time with every other movie. You need to watch this first. Just get to it. It'll it'll change how you see zombie movies. It's spectacular, and I love it, and I recommend it to everyone. Dead Alive. All right. So it's Dead Alive on the Saturday Night Freak Show. That means that uh, we're going to find out what we're watching next week. So, Michaela. <laughs> you know, guys, it's about to be a full moon. So we're going to watch shit. Dog Soldiers next week. Dun, dun, dun. Dog Soldiers. Dog Soldiers. Did they oh. remake this movie? <laughs> did, did they remake it? Re no, it's it's yeah. from 2002. It's 15 oh, years old. It's a, yeah. <laughs> it's a new one from 15 <laughs> years, years ago. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> you, so you haven't yeah. seen it? Oh, yeah. my God. That's what you're no. Saying? No, no, okay. Like, directed, by Neil, directed by Neil Marshall. Oh, so, all right. Yeah. He's got some horror chaps. Okay. Sean's going Neil Marshall. Sean, I know no, Sean's Marshall. going. I I, Sean's Marshall going. I Twitter. hate werewolf movies. <laughs> yeah, this yes. is going to be awful. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll find out next we'll week see. on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, we're going to go pay some bills. So the basement is going dark. <laughs>